Okay, today we're going to go over how to refinish an old piece of furniture. So this piece of furniture actually got on the um, side of the road and brought it in and took the fabric off of it and I'm going to teach you how to strip it down and uh, get it ready for refinish. But the important part is getting the finish off. So that's what we're going to go over today. Once you get the finish off, it's kind of easy. It's just the same as anything else. And before you put a finish on, you're going to sand it with you, you sometimes have to go to 80, but normally not. 80 is usually for planer lines and pencil lines, where an old piece of furniture isn't going to have that because it's already been sanded. So normally you'll start with a 120 grit and then go to a 220 grit, and then it'll be ready for finish again. So um, with any piece of furniture, over time, it'll get old, it'll get nicked up, it'll get, um, you know, and it'll, it'll need to be refinished. This is an antique. This is probably from the... I would think the, the 1940s or so, um, but we're going to show you how to do that. So the first thing that you need to determine um, once you get your stripping um, compound on there is what type of finish the actual um, piece of furniture was finished with. And basically in the, in, in the earlier days, um, they either used a polyurethane, a lot of times it was shellac, um, sometimes lacquer but not usually lacquer didn't come around by then but you don't know if somebody refinished it um, you know before you know after it was originally built so what you do first is if you come over here you'll see this is just a, a stripper that I bought at the hardware store it's called the two-minute stripper now the important thing about this is it will burn your skin so you want to make sure that you have gloves on you have glasses on um, and you want to make sure that you're you're using every precaution not to get it on your skin you want to take your time you want to use some chip brushes to paint it on you'll also use these to agitate uh, then over here if you look this is the thinners that you'll actually pull the finish off with if it is a polyurethane or a paint based um, finish you're going to use paint thinner if it's a shellac uh, which is a good chance what this is you're going to use an alcohol to pull off the finish and then if it's a lacquer you're going to use a lacquer thinner but the first thing you have to do is allow the um, finish or to, to actually start to bubble off of the actual piece of furniture so what we're going to do first I'm going to put you up here let's get you in the spot where you can see let me see here There we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this finish here. Make sure you have your goggles on. You're going to put a little bit in the jar or something that you can get a paintbrush down into. So we're going to go like this here. Put some in a jar. Get some gloves on before we start putting those, before we start agitating it into the, into the chair or the bench. There we go. We're going to take our brush. Move you guys over here so you can see what's going on. Now what you're going to do, you're going to start on one part of the piece of furniture. You're going to dip your brush in. And just start painting as if you would paint anything else. You don't have to be neat about it. You're not worried about lines or, you know, things like that. Start at one piece at a time. Don't try to, don't try to overdo yourself because it'll dry and it'll actually make it harder to get off. So you want to get, put it on there pretty liberally. You know, you want it to kind of get it to gel up and it'll eventually start to pull itself off. And then you're actually going to use your brush um, also as an agitator. So we're going to paint this on the entire thing. And we're just going to start with this front rail first and give it, give it a minute or two to work. And while that's working, I may paint a leg too just to give that time to set in. Um, as you can see, it's already starting to come off a little bit on the brush. It's starting to turn the brush a little bit of a tint of red. So we're going to continue to put a little bit more on there. 
If you do get this stuff on your skin, you want to make sure to go over and rinse it off immediately. Um, it will give you a chemical burn. It, it, you got to remember, it's pulling finish off of wood right now, so it's uh, you know it has some reaction, chemical reaction to it that will burn your skin if you don't get it off of there. I mean, I've got it on. It kind of feels like. You know, I don't know if any of you guys ever been down to the beach, it kind of feels like almost like a jellyfish burns. If you've ever been stung by a jellyfish, that's kind of what it feels like if you let it sit on your skin. So you want to try to get that off as quickly as possible if you get it on there. So we'll let that sit. Get a little bit on here. What I'm doing right now is if you continue to move this brush around, it, it's also agitating that finish back off there. You can use what's called a chip brush. This is a chip brush, but you can also use like a parts cleaning brush. And what you can do is just kind of use it to agitate. But as you can see, as I just did that, I don't know if you can see right here, it's starting to pull that finish off. As you can see, it's starting to gum up a little bit. This bench, this particular bench doesn't have a ton of finish on it looks like just one coat. As you get into some of your old antiques, some people decide they're either going to paint there, um, they may paint them, or there might be multiple, multiple layers of finish on. And this, sometimes you'll have to use your, your paint stripper and your scrapers and things like that several different times in order to get all the finish off. So I'm just going to continue to paint this on there, just giving it some time to sit giving it some time to work on the work on the finish depending on what type of finish you have and I can already see let me kind of show you here so you can see what I'm talking about kind of zoom in on it if you look here if you look that yellow stuff right there that is the finish starting to pull itself off of there so the more you agitate it and the more it sits the chemical will work on the finish and it'll eventually pull it all off. Once you do that, um, you're going to be able to take either a scraper or a rag with some thinner or lacquer thinner and you're going to be able to determine what you're going to be able to take that finish off with and get rid of it because just because you have the stripper on there you still have to get the finish to be pulled off. So I have a feeling that this stuff is shellac. And to get shellac off, you need to use um, you need to use an alcohol product to get it off. So we're going to take a little bit of the alcohol-based um, solution here, and what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and get a little bit on the rag, and just to see if it cuts it. If it doesn't cut it, it means that it's not shellac-based which this is, as you can see, it's starting to pull the finish off. So what I'll have to do is take the alcohol, yeah, it's starting to pull it off, and I'll show you the difference here once I get this off. As you can see, it's starting to pull that finish just directly off there. You want to have a scraper, you want to get rid of this stuff, you don't want it to get clogged up in the rag, so you want to get a scraper, either a metal scraper, or, and then you can actually just pull it off. But, if it starts to, um, there it is right there again. So if it starts to gum up or if it starts to fill up the rag, you're gonna have a hard time pulling it off. So make sure you have a metal scraper on hand. You can get rid of that. This hasn't sat long enough for it actually to, um, to pull this completely off. It still needs to sit a little bit longer. Usually takes about, it says two minutes, but never two minutes never really works for the entire thing so but as you can see it's pulling the pulling all that finish off of there and it's just it's just shellac based if it wasn't it wouldn't pull that off if you used a um, a paint thinner on a shellac it won't have the same effect and it won't pull it off of there so there we go and there's actually just a very thin layer of finish on this there's not a whole lot on it um, so we'll just continue to wipe that off and it looks like down here, and I'll kind of show you, I'll get the camera here and zoom you in, and I'll show you where you, if you know, you need to put more um, paint stripper on or, or finish remover. So if you look 
real close down here, you can see right here, as compared to right here, that there's still finish on this part right here. But on this part, it's actually pulled most of that off. So as I work down here, there's a little bit of finish right here. We're gonna continue to move down, move down, and you can see from the light, there's a little finish right here that still needs to come off. So what you can do is go ahead and just take a little bit more paint stripper and hit those areas. That's why you don't wanna to work too far ahead of yourself um, because the paint stripper will actually evaporate and um, you're just gonna waste it because you're not gonna be able to pull the finish off as, as much. If I did this whole bench at one time, it's gonna take you some, it's gonna take you a good bit of time. So just work in small areas. Don't ever try to put stripper on an entire piece of furniture at one time. All you're gonna do is fight yourself later on. And the longer you let it sit while it's still wet, not when it evaporates, the longer you let it sit, the better off you're gonna be. So we'll let this sit on there again, paint it on, we'll let it sit, we'll pull it off once we do this. So there's a lot of different areas. But in an afternoon, you can take an old piece of furniture if you have one laying around your house and you can almost um, make it new, you know. So my suggestion to you though is after you do your, after you put your finish on, I mean, after you strip it, the same day, don't put, try to put a finish on that exact same day. You wanna make sure that that wood had a very long chance to dry, either over the weekend or put it out in the sun you want that stripper to completely evaporate out of that wood because if you go to try to put a new finish in this this product this stripper product is still saturated in the wood like a sponge it's not going to stick correctly so don't try to rush a refinishing project if you strip it on a if you strip it on a monday wait till a tuesday or a wednesday um, it depends if it sat in the sun if you did it outside let that dry out and then Obviously, you're going to sand it, and then you can stain it if you want. Um, you can stain it and put a new finish on. So, that basically, if you have any old pieces of furniture at your house that are completely, uh, completely nicked up from people running into it or the finish is crackling off, don't be afraid to try to take an old piece of furniture. If you find one laying in the garbage somewhere, and you think it still has some life left in it and you, you know antiques are something that usually are always made out of solid hardwood you couldn't do this to something that you got from ikea because it's just a picture of wood instead of hardwood but that's basically the run of how to refinish something we'll go from this and then once i get the whole thing stripped i'll show you um, this sanding process and then i'll take you through how to refinish you know re-put a, a new finish on so that's it. That's the basics of how to take and start to strip down a piece of material or a piece of wood.